Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, so, the uh, test on Saturday was a success. Uh, we perhaps need to reduce the GTs a little bit, but it's easily done. Uh, all we've got to do is trim a little bit off the afterburner. And afterburners is what I'm doing this video about. A lot of people have been asking how they work. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick video explaining the layout of an afterburner guy called Richard Staveley was the uh, the guy that probably first um, explained this the best in a drawing he did about his very successful afterburner. I've kind of used that as a, a template. I've made a few modifications of my own to mine. And there's a modification in the explanation I'm going to show you which might, might be used, might not be used, but anyway it depends if uh, Terry at uh, TNS CNC as the time to fabricate it before we go out and do a track day. Uh, we have got a track day chosen, it's a few months away, 10th of September at Alvindon with the straight liners. Um, so uh, hopefully get plenty of video from that, hopefully going to try and get three runs in in the day. I don't know if I'll be going for maximum speed, it may be probably just more of a shakedown test. So uh, yeah, just to answer a question guys. I know there's been issues with the audio, I'm trying to sort it out, hopefully this audio is better. Please comment below, let me know what you think of the audio quality, if it's got any better. But uh, as I say, I'm going to do a bit of a video about the afterburner. This is the afterburner for the, the new engine. It's uh, quite a big thing, it's the biggest one I've built so far. Hopefully it's going to work okay, but as I say, um, Bit of an explanation how they work and then uh, I'll uh, let you into some of what uh, we plan for the future with this engine. Uh, I'd like to build another engine, I'm open to build one for other people if they're interested um, but uh, once we've got the afterburner test done and we've hopefully set a new quarter mile record um, we're going to evolve the whole thing and uh, hopefully get some real serious speed out of this little go-kart chassis. So right, let's get on with it. So here we go, um, this is the illustration I mentioned that Richard Stavely shared uh, on originally on the Yahoo group DIY Gas Turbines. It uh, is available on the uh, Facebook page, uh, DIY Gas Turbines on Facebook. Uh, I think it's also on the JTO site, you can uh, have a look at it there or download it. Um, the best advice I can give you basically is to if you're building an afterburner is to use this illustration as a as a guide uh, basically I would um, take um, your exducer diameter of the, the turbine wheel as um, as your guide um, and work it backwards if you've got example if your exducer on your your turbine wheel is 75 mil, uh, which is a quarter less. Scale all of these down to a quarter, um, and you'll you'll pretty much find it should work. But there is still a bit of a black art to uh, afterburner design. You've got the the fuel inlet ring there, your igniter plug. Uh, I've done a bit of a 3D illustration there to help people out to visualise it a bit better. Um, bit of a cutaway here so you can see inside you've got the uh, the fuel rail there um, I'll show you that in a little bit more detail you've got the uh, the tube that comes out of the turbine housing and uh, causes the pressure dump around here it comes out in a mushroom to say I'll go through this a little bit more detail uh, we'll break it down into sections so we've got fuel ring there fuel delivery ring this is a little bit more than what Richard originally designed this is something I've been working on with uh, Terry at TNS CNC uh, it's got a lot more holes in there we're, we're hoping to be able to inject the fuel at multiple points get as best mix of fuel as possible um, 
I know Terry's busy, so we, we are just waiting for it to be finished. If by the time I come to run the afterburner, it's not done, I'll use a more traditional ring and then swap it out at a later stage. That goes inside the uh, the dump tube, as I call it. Um, remembering your turbine wheels approximately here. Um, the reason I've got this castellated effect or wave effect is I hope it's causing better mixture of the fuel and air. You've got a longer surface leading edge there, which is more opportunity for the pressure differential. Uh, I don't know if it works, but it's something I've been using for a while on my engines and uh, it may work, it may not, we're not sure. And then basically the rest of the assembly, cone, cones are stronger than flats, uh, I've found an experience. And then you've got your uh, final outlet cone. Now if you find when you've, you've built your afterburner, your exhaust gas temperatures go a little bit high on your engine. Um, as you all know, you should keep your exhaust gas temperature as close as possible to 750 degrees or below. The best thing I can suggest is to trim this off a millimetre at a time. Run your engine, see where the temperatures are. Don't push it past 750 degrees. Back it off, stop, trim a bit off that and then run it again until you, you tune it um, to your engine. But obviously you've got to make sure your engine's running well before you uh, even attempt to fit an afterburner um, you can ruin an engine quite quickly with uh, over temperature in it and uh, you'll make a, a mess of your hard work so that's it basically an afterburner as I say fuel gets pushed towards the turbine wheel pushed back dumps out of here you've got your igniter plug somewhere down here uh, and basically you'll, you'll see from videos that uh, I've got online and others have got online of user similar styles from Richards and other people's um, you can see a lot of coloration a lot of heat down this this side this end of the afterburner but not so much here and that's basically because the fuels being dumped in here mixed and then this acts as like a flame holder um, you do get some soak back obviously as, as the heat soaks into the material but you, you tend to get like a a line across here um, and it will also give you an indication of how well it's all mixing and that so that's it that's pretty much the afterburner so this is what I've been working on at the moment uh, it's probably eight months to a year it's uh, the free power for the new engine free power section for the new engine once we've uh, had some fun out of the, the engine with the afterburner. It's time to unleash uh, the real potential of the engine. Um, there's a lot of work still involved, a lot of working out to do. I want to say thank you to John Wallace for uh, he's sending me a, a, fourth, a C28 fourth stage turbine wheel to use as the, the, uh, the wheel, the turbine wheel in the, the free power section. I want to thank John for all the help with the the engine and being there to talk ideas through and the gearbox is uh, using the same gear gearing as John's using in the gearbox he's making at the moment uh, the gears are on the way I've got the bearings I'm pricing up the aluminium billet or seeing what is available in people's scrap bins that I know um, you literally have just got a well for me anyway I don't have a great deal of money spare excuse me sorry about that and what money I do have tends to go in these projects so uh, yeah um, probably eight months to a year before we we uh, have something to show for it. Um, but if I can buy up all the bits that I'm going to need and, and give me plenty, self plenty of time. So I hope some of that information has been helpful. Just a, a little side note from the uh, the test on the last test on the engine. Uh, you might have seen the girlfriend stood in the kitchen window at some stage. If you look right behind the engine, waving at me. What she was trying to tell me is that the heat from the afterburner was actually distorting the UPVC frame of the, the double glazed unit and uh, all the cobwebs and whatever was in the seals was all getting blown out. Luckily it all went back, but I do think it's the last test I'll be doing in the garden. Um, the next test obviously we need to run the afterburner, but I might just wait until we get to 
Alvington on the 10th of September and uh, just hope and pray that the afterburner lights on the button if not there is methods I've got that uh, I can control it into lighting but once again guys thanks for watching thanks for taking the time please like and share comment below any information I can share with you I will do check out the J2 JTO forum that's jet and turbine owners um, there's uh, plenty of help on there a lot of guys hang out there that are building similar projects but for now guys take care thanks again bye